you cannot consider yourself a true maker or artist unless you make 100% of what you sell from scratch. Let's talk about that. Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Sam Craft. Today's video is going to be something that is kind of a sensitive subject for, well, anyone in our arena. Anyone who is in the world of, I create things, I sell things, I like to do what I do, you're going to have an opinion. You're going to fall somewhere on this spectrum of agreeing with, completely disagreeing with, or kind of, eh, I see where you're coming from in the middle. In today's video, I want to talk about the conception. Whether it be a misconception or a hit conception of you cannot really consider yourself arrived to the world of artistic creation unless you make every single bit of your piece that you have in the end yourself. Whether it be with your two hands, in your workshop, something. There has to be a dead set level of blood, sweat, and tears go in your product. Otherwise, it's junk going to bring you along with a project and I mean we're, we're talking about this subject it may not even be considered a project to some people but I will say project because otherwise I don't know what word to use I'm going to make a little sign on my laser engraver using some graphic designs that I designed earlier and put something together to make something in my shop and kind of show you guys what I'm talking about I would say the origin of this concept that you have to make everything yourself otherwise you are somehow subpar or not as good as another creator probably stems from well social interaction <laughs> if we were in our own little worlds our own little bubbles by ourselves and we created something and we ourselves were happy with it that would be it end of story when you bring other people into the mix especially others in your field so professional colleagues perhaps other people you look up to who do a similar craft, that's when the problem happens. The problem happens whenever you start comparing what you make to what someone else does and judging yourself. So I'll give you a little history of Sam Craft and Sam, the guy behind Sam Craft really. My experience in this whole world was small business, woodworking, making, selling things, generating my income from a Thing that I do myself. This all started about four years ago. I started with making items to sell at craft shows and try and figure out what do people like, what do I see other people making, when I go to shows, what looks cool, what can I do. I filled out my repertoire of products and bought a lot of equipment and stuff and traveled to craft shows. I did that for about a year and it was terrible. Maybe I'm just a bad salesman. Actually, I probably really am. Maybe my products were not original or something was wrong. Either way, after a year of doing craft shows, I decided that that was not the business model that was working or that I wanted to do. After craft shows, I switched over to the mindset of can I come up with something that could be wholesaled or reselled to local shops or boutiques in our area. I looked into that, kind of went that way a little while and realized that, okay, while there is a demand for this, a lot of shops would love to get handmade woodwork items to sell in their stores. The profit margin is not there. A lot of those other small businesses are struggling with overhead and price points, profitability margins, and they were just running a ship that is so tight there was not enough room for my profit plus theirs. So I then went on to the world of direct online sales. And that for me has been the best route so far. Direct marketing straight from me to my customer allows me to maximize my profits. There are no middle people between us. There is very low overhead. All I honestly need are the material costs, machine costs, and power structure kind of expenses. There's no travel required. There's no setup fees at events. There's no special equipment needed to sell at events and so many other things that make this, for me, the best business structure that I've come up with. Here we have it. There is the newest creation from Sam Craft. A very cool looking Goonies sign. Now, not only does the fact that it's Goonies make it cool, 
but I actually liked the irregularities that the engraving or burning happened with the wood grain and the paint that was already on this sign. Very neat. This looks like it would be comfortable in a home, in a, I don't know, vacation rental, beach house, or in Sam's workshop. So there's no telling where it'll go. Of all of those things, I only have a home and a workshop. So <laughs> point A, point B. So throughout this whole video, you have seen the workflow or the process for making a sign such as this. I start with a blank object, in this case, a pre-made sign purchased, and I then take my design that I want to engrave on it into Lightburn and design it and build all of that, come up with what I want created, load it up into my laser engraver and let it go. Now, that whole process, Honestly, when everything has fallen into place as luckily as it did for this first time I've ever made a project like this, that looks incredibly easy. It is super easy. No problems. However, this concept of, wow, that's easy, well, I guess it's not a quality item, is a toxic concept. So stop doing it. If you're doing that, stop. I think too many times we see largely on social media that unless you are toiling away with a chisel and hand tools and you're just taking forever to do something that what you created is somehow of lesser quality inferior and something to be frowned upon we got to stop that we as makers woodworkers business people have really got to stop allowing ourselves to be feeling bad talk down to or don't you dare talk down to others because that is so discouraging. That is in no way encouraging to someone who is maybe trying to start and that's all they can do. Or someone who has the desire to really create something but their personal life does not allow them to spend days upon days in a workshop creating something by hand. Maybe they don't yet have the skill set to do that. Whatever the case may be, we have got to quit making people feel inferior because we are jealous or we don't have that tool or we don't have XYZ or they don't have ZYX, whatever the case may be. Stop it. Okay, Sam's off his soapbox, perhaps. So going back to this, this project, this thing of contention. Honestly, if your goal is to run a business, which is what my goal is, you have got to always keep the bottom dollar in mind the profit, the money of it. Yeah, that's a you know, four letter word to some people in this arena, but that's where you've got to segregate yourself. You need to realize, it is my goal to be a guild artist and I'm creating beautiful works of art? Or is my goal to try and generate some income from my workshop so that I don't have to be stuck at the office 50 hours a week, so I can be home with my kids or family more often, or just so I can do what I enjoy doing? Whatever the case may be, the number one thing you gotta do is know what you want. For me, this fits the bill. For me right now, this fits the bill. I'm not saying this is me forever. I'm not saying that this is the pinnacle of my craft and creation. This is an example of how I'm able to quickly create something, reproduce it, offer it to many people, and then have the time, money, and ability to step up things here and there in my personal world outside of samcraft outside of woodworking and small business we are in the process of moving we're going to be moving to a different state we have got to completely rebuild everything spoiler alert this workshop is someday not going to be mine and where i'm going to there is no workshop so i am personally having a lot of things going on outside of this workshop, outside of my Samcraft time, which is why a project like this, an item like this, is very valuable. So maybe my goal with this whole video was to maybe ease myself, ease my own concerns, make me feel better about showing that this is something I will make and sell. Then again, maybe this video is also intended for you, whether you are someone who wants to do something like this, wants to buy these signs wholesale, add your own customization, your own personal touches, and then sell it on to a customer, maybe that's you. Maybe you're the person who has been trolling and dogging people because they don't craft this by hand, that 
this is not good because Sam, you didn't go find that barn wood. You didn't pull the barn wood off of a barn and sand it down and cut it and rip it. You didn't assemble this. You didn't use milk paint for the sign. You didn't, you know, hand weave the jute twine to hold it. So you're not good. Maybe this video is for you. Maybe you need to realize that the concept of creating art, and I think it can be said that a lot of what we do is art, is something that is very subjective to the person. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that applies to woodworking as well as everything else in life. In closing, guys, I hope that I have been able to encourage you, whether you are in any area of this spectrum. Hopefully, what you have seen here has been helpful, inspiring. Maybe you learned something. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video or anything regardless in the little realm of Samcraft, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I read every single comment, and the good ones, I love to respond to and reply. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop. Something such as this with a low price point of purchase and personal shop time investment and everything would be great for gifts. Aha, uh -huh, holiday gift time is coming up. Yes, this is definitely going to be probably gifted to someone I know in the family. I hope they don't watch this channel. Um, if they do, and it's you, and XYZ, and this doesn't end up on my wall, then just act surprised. And then realize that your your gift was featured in a Samcraft video where he berated people for making him feel inferior about his woodwork. <laughs> <laughs>